Hi guys and welcome to this week's episode of Knowledge Finder EDU. Today we have a special guest, Jazz Rose, the investor, mentor, serial entrepreneur. Welcome, Jazz. Thank you. Thank you for having me, King. Appreciate it. I appreciate you coming down. So I met Jazz at um, a landmark event. And for those who don't know what that is, it's an event where you go to basically connect with other people that are like-minded and start a journey of, well, financial freedom, if that's what you're into. And maybe you can explain it a bit better than that for me, (laughs) better than me. Well, Landmark is a personal development program, right? Yeah. And it's about investing in yourself in order to become the most fulfilled version of you. You see, a lot of people talk about professional development, right? And professional development is really important. But there's a difference between professional development and personal development. And a lot of people, like when I was 27, 28, right, I went through a journey of significantly investing in myself in terms of professional development. And what happened was over the course of about 12 to 18 months, I spent £30,000 in professional development. What I didn't understand was this. Investing in professional development without investing in personal development is like trying to have a high quality relationship with a low quality person. Okay, can you add it? <laughs> it messes you up. It messes you up, right? It's like trying to play it's like trying to play a professional football game on a muddy surface with AstroTurf boots. Yeah. Exactly. You ain't invested in yourself. You ain't got the right equipment for you yet in order to master what needs to be mastered out there. How do you feel that way? You have an example. Be- because it's like because how can you, it's like you have all of the tools, all of the resources from professional development, yeah. but you're not capable of utilizing them to their fullest impact until you invest in you. Yeah. You're not capable of utilizing them to your fullest impact until you really leverage the skill set of yourself and understand who you are, what it is that you, like how you've come to be who you are yeah. and how you're going to, going to take your life forward. I'm with you. Makes that's sense. the under, that, That's the underpinnings of personal development. So right. when you hear people talk about personal development, it's a really powerful thing um, because we spend so much time investing in external resources, but we don't invest in the internal. Mm-hmm. Do you get it? It's like having it's like having a banged up car, right? <laughs> it's like having a banged up car, and you invest in all of the nice rims and the brand new steering wheel and the and the and the new gear stick, and all, <laughs> but it's still a banged up car, right? <laughs> So you've got, to, you've, you've got to make sure that you, you look after you first and you manage you first, develop you first, and then professional development comes after that. So mm. let's talk about yourself then um, and your journey to get into where you are today. I know you founded the company JNC. I know you invest in properties. But how did you get there? How did you get to your first property? How did you get to... JNC being a profitable company? Yeah, JNC, I started it when I was 17, okay? And I started it because I couldn't find a job, (laughs) essentially. And no one would employ me. I tried Woolworths and Sainsbury's and Tesco's and they were like, nah, not interested. So uh, essentially, I was working for somebody doing some sports coaching stuff and she left. Uh, I had about 15 children per week and they were all paying me two pound a session to deliver basketball and football and hockey and all sorts of different stuff because I really wanted to engage girls and boys through sport and what I found was that I was I fulfilled a really good gap in that marketplace of coaching Mm -hmm. because I was able to bridge the gap between the arts and the academics so I was able to bridge that gap for the children and I expanded and got so busy I had to employ other people so what I realized that if you can make 30 pound a week you can also make three million a year. So over a 10 year period, I kept on growing this team and building this team. And you know, over a 10 year period, I ended up having like 150 staff engaging up to 50,000 children every single week and turned it from a 30 pound a week business to a three million pound a year business. And then through that process, I was able to buy a series of properties that would eventually come to be able to pay for my lifestyle. And I think that's really important piece when it comes to financial freedom and really, really leveraging to the highest point of yourself, because the purpose of financial freedom is really to leverage to the highest, most abundant version of you. Yeah. Right. And once you have the financial capacity to do that, you have the assets paying for your lifestyle experiences. Money becomes a secondary part of your consciousness rather than a primary concern. Yeah, I'm really So that's kind of how I started. And that's what's propelled, been able to propel me to where I am today. Nice. So yeah. 
JNC allowed you to move into the property arena. Mm. Why did you take that that avenue? Uh, probably uh, knowledge and lack of lack of knowledge. Okay, so uh, it was the only thing that I knew that was gonna be able to provide me with a secondary sustainable income, and that I can invest my money. I always grew up knowing knowing that investing is really important and powerful, because. Whilst I loved my career and I loved my business, I always knew in the back of my mind somewhere that it wasn't going to be forever. Mm -hmm. And I think that we've seen that in our in in the world right now with you know with COVID and everything like that that's happened. Nothing yeah. is forever, right? Yeah. Everything is a vehicle in order to get you to a certain journey. So whilst as I say, I, I really enjoyed the business, I knew I needed to have something secondary in case something happened to the primary. I'm moving. Yeah. Totally. So. Um, when it comes to selling the business then, how did you know your time was up? <laughs> Great question. I've never been asked that before. How do you know when your time is When you stop learning. You st you, your time is up when you stop learning, you stop growing. And I'll, I've reached a point of stagnation in that business where I had reached my peak in my performance. Yeah. And I tried over the next five, maybe six years to, to really leverage it and really strive and really grow it. And it wasn't fulfilling the purpose that I intended it for for me it was fulfilling the purpose for the community <laughs> it was fulfilling everybody else's purpose everybody else was getting their pockets filled and getting things that they wanted but it wasn't fulfilling for me anymore yeah and going back to the point of personal development you've got to fill up your cup first in order to really add significant value to others I'm with you mm. so you felt that he wasn't growing anymore mm. and what did you decide to do next? Did you have an urge to do something else mm. with your time? Mm. I didn't. I didn't. I had an urge to live a life of financial freedom and creativity. I had an urge to add value to others in different contexts because here's the thing. Through that journey, I have picked up so many skill sets. Yeah. I'm a great writer, I'm a great public speaker, I'm a great uh, author, I'm, a, I'm great at an array of different things. And what I found was that once I reached my peak in that position, I had to then start to push out my skill sets into different areas. If you look at some of the most uh, influential people in the world, they have multiple skill sets that they're able to apply in different contexts. And that for me is I don't want to be confined to a single box. Oh, I'm this person or oh, I'm that person. No, I have a multiple array of skill sets that I wanted to, that I had a desire to utilize. When I sold JNC, I didn't realize how I was going to utilize those assets yeah. fully. But over the course of the last 12, months or so I found my spot I found my sweet spot where I'm really enjoying thriving okay so yeah. you spoke about utilizing your skill sets what would you say to somebody that's working in the corporate world and feels that way they have more more than one skill set but they're siloed into their position mm, yeah perfect first you've got to add value in different contexts in the space that you're in so you might be in a corporate world you might be confined to a certain uh, for want of a better word to a certain box but then you've got to start to look elsewhere outside of your current department and see where else you can add value. Yeah. So let's say you're, for example, you're a technical engineer and that's what you've been doing for the last five, six years and you're very good at your job. Well, when was the last time you spoke to the sales manager? When was the last time that you went for a, a, a drink with one of the directors of marketing, for example? Yeah. And there's so many things that happen in your company that you have no idea about. Right? Mm -hmm. So then you've got to start to pick different elements of that business and find out what you can learn from that business because that does two things. A, it increases your value in the company because now you're more aware of what's going on and you can start to add drips of, oh, I learned that piece from marketing. Oh, I learned that bit from the sales team. Oh, I learned that bit from the other tech guy that do something completely different to what I do. And now you start to drip feed that content into your work. So now that you start to bridge these things together you become more influential you become more powerful you become more effective at what you do what does that do well that that means you're more valuable you're more difficult to replace because you've now implemented a whole new system within the tech department that the tech department has never seen before yeah. you started to bridge the gap between the marketing team and the tech team right nobody else does this stuff so now you've got to learn all of these different things the second thing that it does is that it not only adds value to you within that particular industry or within that particular workplace but now you've got multiple skill sets that you can pull outside and start to apply to your own life right yeah. maybe everyone's got multiple skills 
but most of us under underutilize it because what we've learned through school, you know, you do one subject at a time and they're kind of like, um, they're, they're kind of like separate subjects. But if you start to bridge this gap together and then start to build up your side hustle or your secondary business on the side, there's no limit to what you can do. Yeah. Yeah. So what if you don't have an idea then? You've got, you know you have um, certain skills, but you have zero idea mm. um, what to do outside of work. Yeah, perfect. The, the, you, spend, you spend the next 12 to 24 months learning different stuff, you'll find what to do. Yeah. You'll find what works for you because once you, because what happens is right. And I'm looking across across from where we are, right. And there's people in offices, and then there's people in another office and another office. What happens is you're in an office of six to eight people, and those are the people that you vibe with and communicate with and you interconnect with. And, but you never look outside of your eight people, yeah. Or you very rarely communicate and have a detailed, in-depth conversation with the people outside of your bubble, and that's a problem because then you're, you're isolating, you're over isolating your skill sets and you're not learning from different departments. You're not learning from different people that can add significant value. I was watching something this morning just on the way here that's uh, completely unrelated to, to, to what I do. It's more of like an entertainment podcast, but I found something that can add value to what I'm doing. Yeah. And that's, and that's what it's about. So, so, so once you, one, one, yeah, you look for those nuggets and once you find it, you find where you can add value. Go to your, go to your line manager, go to your boss, go to someone in your company and say, hey, how can I be a 10 out of 10 performer at this company? Yeah. How can I add more value? Once you start finding those things and you start having those conversations, you will find different areas. What are we really struggling with this year? What's our biggest, what's our biggest concern in this company right now? Yeah. What's your boss gonna say? Oh, well, we've got problems with the marketing and the sales and they're not communicating, blah, 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 blah. And over time, you start to find gaps and you think, oh, I know the marketing team, I know the sales team, I can bridge this gap. Yeah. And you start being able to fill concerns that your company has within the company. What happens outside of that then is you start to find concerns that happen in elsewhere in the community. Oh, this is not a problem just here. <laughs> I've developed an app. I've developed a solution to, uh, I don't know what it is, right? Whatever it is for you, I've developed something that works here. Maybe I can just like put it on Instagram and tell other people that I can do it as well. Yeah. And over the course of time, you start communicating with more people about the skill sets that you have and what you can offer. More people start coming to you. That's how the money tracker started. It started off just a little small idea testing something out, I had no intention of making a business out of it, yeah. or no specific intention, let's say, that's how it's grown. Now let's speak about that then, money tracker and money mastery. So after selling your business, you had um, more free time, so you went on to do money tracker and money mastery. If you could explain what that's about and where people can um, find you and get involved with it. Yeah, money mastery, uh, first of all, the money tracker is a tool that I created last year during lockdown, yeah. uh, around this time last year, actually. And I created that in order to help people to eliminate financial constraints and elevate to financial consciousness. Yeah. And the reason that I created that was because I was financially stressed out <laughs> and I had no idea where, where all my money was going. So I, I found over time that after I created this product for me, I found that other people also didn't know where their money was going and money was just coming into their account and leaking out like a sieve, right? <laughs> like irrespective of how much we have, you've got to learn to manage your money and let it nurture and grow, but you've got to care for it. So um, once I created this tool for me, I sent it to my cousin and he said, oh, it's great. I love it, blah, 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 blah. And started sharing what I was doing on my WhatsApp stories. People were like, oh, this is amazing. Can I have one? Yeah. And I gave away about 10 or 20 for free. And then people were coming back and saying, you know, this has helped me do this, has helped me save so much money, et cetera. So then I put it on Instagram and said, someone messaged me the first day I put it on Instagram. Someone messaged me and said, how much can I buy that for? And I went, I don't know, <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> but, but then I was like, then I was like, then I was like, shall I send it to him for free? Then I was like, nah, I can't do that. I was like, let me overcome my fear of like selling something. Yeah. On, because I've never sold anything on like Instagram or anything like that. I was like, not what it's for. Was, this is what I'm thinking at the time. Yeah. I was like, 20 quid, here's my bank details. Yeah. That was my first sale. And then, you put, uh, you <laughs> and then that fear in. right, and there you go, and then that happened, and then that happened, and I, and then I started sharing it on my story and on my posts and stuff like that, and then all of a sudden, people, you know, dozens and dozens of people are buying it, and then I'm like, okay, cool, I'm fed up of sending people my bank details now, 
yeah. let me create a platform where people can just go online and buy it themselves. So that's how it's grown from there, brother. Nice, nice. So um, what is your Instagram handle so they can find you? Yeah, it's at Mr. Jazz Rose. That's at Mr. J-A-Z-Z-R-O-S-E. Check yeah. it out. You'll definitely yeah. see all of the latest courses that Jazz provides, etc. on there. Um, so let's talk about Money Mastery then. What is, what is that about? Yeah, Money Mastery is a powerful program and it's designed to transform your relationship with money and take your financial life to the next level so it's the only program that i'm aware of that actually teaches you the whole breadth of money in terms of mastering your money mindset increasing your income managing your money really effectively and investing it powerfully for the long term so that you have a sustainable investment that's going to grow with you and for, and for you. So it does all of those things and we, it's a live program where I teach you each of those different steps and I have a program and the really, really precise and accurate content and it's very interactive as well. So that's one of the things that's really valuable about it is that we're having a live conversation about where you're at. Because one thing is that you can take information from books, from YouTube and all of that sort of stuff, but you can't take transformation from that. So when we talk about transformation, it's coming from a, you become a completely different person in terms of the way that you perceive money, the way that you perceive your time and the way that you perceive your life. One of our, one of our clients that we had back in October, he reached out to me and he said, look, it's completely changed my life. I said, what do you mean? He said, well, you know how I used to live in the UK and I used to be a DJ? I was like, yeah. And he was like, I had one stream of income. He was like, yeah. He was like, well, I'm now living in Barbados with my family. On the first Money Mastery program that I came on to review, I made £30,000 in the space of a week. And I had no clients that year due to COVID, but I did what you said and I made £30,000. I gained three new clients in the space of a week. Yeah. Brilliant. Now, I have a completely new perspective on my life and I'm living in Barbados and I'm running four different businesses. Nice. I said, how on earth does that happen? personal development and going back this kind of uh, sinks into what we were saying as, as well because what it is that money mastery is a perfect hybrid between personal and professional development you see most people want to develop that most people want to tell you about investing or they want to tell you about how to save money or they want to tell you how to do one two three or thing but what it doesn't do it doesn't give you the holistic cycle so i can teach you how to invest money but if you don't have the mindset and you're scared to invest then what are you going to do you're going to sit there and go, uh, I kind of, I know what to do, but I'm still a bit scared. Let me just do a tenner. Yeah. And then you kind of like drip feed and you make some gains, but it's not massive. It's, it's not significant. But when you have the personal and professional development hybrid, oh my goodness, it's, it's incredible. Yeah. No, that's it's incredible. Nice. I'll be signing up to the Money Mastery course and coming to check it out because it is true. I was saying regardless of how much you make, Somehow money just starts to disappear. You know, <laughs> yeah. Checking your accounts, yeah. and <clears throat> your direct debits, etc. So I'll be signing up. Mm. Um, what motivates you then? Because you've got to that point of financial freedom that everybody's dying to get to. And before you get to that point, everybody's motivational factor seems to be money. They want more money. They want to buy a larger house, larger car. They get those things. And then they're still not financially free because they got them in the wrong way. But um, <laughs> doing it the right way and becoming financially free, where's your? Where do you get your motivation from now? Mm. Let me let me respond to something that you said there first, Eli. And you said most people are dying to get to. Mm -hmm. Consider that most people are dying to get to financial freedom. And I know you said that in jest, but if you think about what you just said, it was, it, it's very literal. And people are struggling to get to a space of financial freedom. Mm. But you are born to be an abundant, blessed and creative human being. So why are you struggling? Grass doesn't struggle to grow. Fish don't struggle to swim. Humans don't struggle to be creative and to create the value that way. We are born on this earth to create whatever it is that we want. So once you start understanding that concept, that struggle just no longer becomes a thing. Struggle becomes an empty vessel that you, <laughs> you know, we're not born to, uh, we're, we're not born to live in a life of challenge and struggle. Yeah. We're born to actually live a world and to live a life of creativity and success. Yeah. So that's why, you know, the Money Mastery Program, these kind of things are so powerful. And 
what stands out for me and what inspires me and what motivates me is empowering other people to get into that position. Because I, I as you know, we know, you know, thousands of people that are struggling every day to kind of get free. Yeah. And one of the one of the things that I hear a lot on the Money Mastery program, for example, is when people say to me, I realize that getting to a space of financial freedom isn't as hard as I thought it was. You know, and once you understand the design, once you understand that a school isn't designed to make you successful, once you understand the design of why you are where you are today and how you've become that way, what are the strengths, what are the weaknesses? Once you understand that whole concept, you're able to look at it from a different perspective and go, oh, I get it. All right, all I've got to do is that. Yeah. And I'm away, I'm off. And that's what happened to me. Yeah. So now your sole motivation is seeing others flourish from what you're doing. Yeah, absolutely. That's that's great. That's, that's <laughs> endless, endless cycle fulfillment. Yeah, absolutely. That and and that's business, Eli. You know, you you have to get into a and business is so much more powerful and so much more effective when you do it from a space of love and creativity. When you do it from a when you do it from a space of I need to make money. That's when you have struggle and strife. That's when you have a constant resistance yeah and when you remove that resistance it's like running with a big heavy bag with weights in the back right once you remove that resistance you move that bag you've got all this energy you've got all this abundance to run to run to run yeah. and you're like mo farrow on that track and like nobody ain't slowing you down nobody ain't stopping you it's true but what would you say then to people that they're starting a business because they solely want to make money for example knowledge finder is a business that started with a purpose really to provide information, um, one platform for information that is not there. Mm. So for me, this doesn't really seem like, oh, I have to make money or, or work in a way. Mm. But a lot of people start a business rather than it being like fixing a problem. They have an idea of how to make a profit mm. and they run with that. Would you say that's a bad idea? Because it, it does work for some people. So. Yeah, I wouldn't say it's a bad idea. I would also say that it's not the most resistant free way to run your life. You see, what happens when you do that is that the business runs you, you don't run the business. Okay. Uh, or, or what's much more likely, because that happens on both ends, but it's much more likely and much more easy for the business then to run you because you've set it up for the purpose of adding value to you, which means that you, you break the cycle of human abundance. You break the cycle of the natural laws of creation, right? Natural laws of creation says that grass doesn't, doesn't work hard to grow. Fish don't struggle to swim, right? So the natural laws and the natural vibrations of, of, of human evolution then is to make sure that you create without, without, uh, without resistance, right? But when you do it only for you, what's going to happen is if I say to you, hey, Eli, I'm going to sell you this glass and you're going to pay me £10 for it. And you're going to like, I've got a glass already. But, I, but Eli, you need my glass, right? Yeah. But I've got a glass already. I don't need any more. You see, now I've, we're already in what? We're in a resistance state, yeah. right? So now your customers are going to be uh, in a state of resistance because they see that they're adding value to you, but you're not adding significant value to them. So when you start a company or when you start a business or when you think about what I call the law of fear exchange, Okay, you always have to strive to add significantly more value than what the customer pays. When you're able to add significantly more value than what the customer pays, guess what happens? You get more customers. <laughs> and the customers start flooding to you and your customers don't just stay customers, they become advocates. Yeah. And they start advocating your product and program for you, which means that more people flood in and you open up the floodgates for more possibility. When it's just for you, then you're in this confined space and it's just you. It's just you. It's just you. You make a little bit here, you make a little bit there, but then it's just you. It's just you. You're blocking the flow of money. Money is a flow. Yeah. How can you block the flow? Money comes from the word currency. Currency comes from the word career, which means to flow, to run. Money is meant to run. So why are you blocking it? <laughs> I think that's some great advice, guys. Uh, yeah, and I do think there's a lot of, within our community anyway, there's a lot of I within certain businesses and especially startups anyway. Hmm. So I think that is a real gem um, when starting a business. Like have a different perspective about it and play the team game a bit more is one thing I would say. Um, Let's move on now to some more more gems for them. Mm -hmm. Firstly, what is three things you would say people, young people should do with their money today? Yeah, three things you need to know. Uh, 
forget your income for a minute, right? Everyone wants to talk about income and they think that that's, that's the golden egg. No, like there's three numbers that you need to know before you know about your in, before you focus on your income. Number one is what's your savings ratio, right? How, what percentage of your income do you save every single month? Once you know that and you, you honor that, you develop, thing, you, you develop something called financial integrity. When you develop financial integrity, you develop integrity with yourself. When you master self, anything else can be mastered. When you don't master yourself, you struggle, <laughs> okay? Now, so the first thing is your savings ratio. The second thing that you need to know is what is your net worth? Your net worth is your assets minus your liabilities. You need to know that number. And you need to know that number for the purpose of, now you've got to know what your net worth goal is. What's your net worth goal? Your annual expenditure multiplied by 25 years. You don't know that number, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna do exactly what you said, and you're going to, uh, what was the word you're going to, uh, what was the word you used? Fight? Struggle? Oh yeah, you're going to be struggling or dying to... Them. Right, you're going to be dying, you're going to be, you're, gonna, you're, you're not making a living, you're making a dying, right? You're just <laughs> working until you're dead until the government says, okay, you're 75 now, we'll pay you for the rest of your life, and we'll pay you a portion of what you used to earn which is just insignificant anyway and then you're going to continue to struggle and beg your children for money it's not it's not it's not what we're what we're designed to do as i said we're designed to create a life of creativity and success Indeed. yeah no, thanks for that and also property wise then right now if you do have some cash around what areas would you say is good to invest in and why yeah every uh, by the time this is released it's probably going to change so um people need to be aware of that um sorry it won't be it won't be changed within sort of a space of a couple of months but um you know people might be watching this years down the line or whatever but you've got to look at uh, areas like manchester are thriving areas like liverpool is really on the rise right now you've got areas like uh nottingham uh, really high thriving. You've got a lot of investment going into these cities and you can still buy them relatively cheap. And what's going to happen in the next five to 10 years is they're going to become more and more expensive. And then you're going to say to yourself, man, why didn't I buy in Liverpool? Man, why didn't I buy in Manchester? Because yeah. then like, I run a property masterclass where people can come and learn all of the mistakes that I've made in terms of investing in property and also learn and leverage from the successes that I've had so that you get a complete framework of where to go, what to look for, how to ask, Ask how to build relationships with buy with sellers. How to do like how to do all of that. So actually, you're much more is much more less resistance on your journey to getting that first property or that second or that third, and really understanding the context of what you're doing so that you can get better deals and add better, better value. Yeah, okay, and where can we find the the property masterclass? Yeah, just uh, go to my Instagram. <clears throat> excuse me, and the links in my bio is all there. You've got the property masterclass. You've got the money tracker. You've got money mastery. Yeah. Cool. All right, then I'll definitely be checking that out. Um, is there any advice that you would like to give to young people that want to start a business? Young people that want to start a business. Um, start small and scale up. That's the most powerful thing. And that sounds like a really uh, incredibly simple bit of advice that it is. But if you start small and scale up, there's no limit to what, what it is that you can create. A lot of people start, start with the mindset of, oh, I need to grow this big business. Oh, I need to get to here. I need to get to 100K a, a year. I need to do X, Y, and Z. No, no, no. Start small. Start with no... What's the word? Start with the primary premise being to add significant value. Start with that, you know? And what you find is that, like, for example, I gave the money tracker away for free, right? First and foremost. Yeah. Now, primary premise, adding significant value. What happens in that process? I get iteration. I get feedback. Oh, this is really good. Oh, this is, uh, this. I think this can be better, blah, 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 blah. That comes through natural and habitual conversation. So when you give it away for free at first, now I'm getting natural feedback. Now I'm improving the product for the next customer that comes in. And then you reach a bridging point. You reach a bridging point where it's, it's irrefutable that people have to pay. Yeah. And it's not you saying, oh, please buy my money tracker. Oh, please buy my service. No, it's, it's you saying to me, how much can I pay you for that? Yeah. When people start saying to you, how much can I pay you for that? That's when you know you've got a quality product or a quality service. And that's when you start to build and scale up everything. That, and I'm going to talk about this on, um, on Money Mondays. <laughs> So Jess, can you tell us a bit more about Money Mondays? Yeah, Money Mondays is a weekly conversation where I give you the inspiration, insights and information to step into your week with success. And that's a free conversation that I do every Monday morning, 7.15am to really help elevate people's consciousness and take things forward. 
So there you have it, guys. Make sure they're up early, 7.15 7 in the morning. Jazz is a guy I watch on WhatsApp. He's <laughs> up posting 5, 6 a.m. in the morning, telling us how we can save 100 quid before we've even started the day. <laughs> so be sure to check it out. Um, thank you very much for coming down, Jabs. Pleasure. And thank you guys for watching. Until next week, take care. Peace out.